Okay, we're now going to look in uh, a little bit more detail on the uh, open circuit time constant or OCTC method uh, to find uh, the high frequency roll off of an amplifier. So we're going to assume that we have a general transfer function, uh, AV of S, and it's got a number of zeros and a number of poles. And the one key here is that the number of poles in the equation is greater than the number of zeros. Uh, and the reason uh, that we're looking at this is that we're going to be finding basically the high frequency roll off of the amplifier and we assume that the amplifier will roll off and what this means is that we need to have at least one extra pole to cause the roll off. Okay, so uh, essentially what we're doing is finding this pole frequency. Okay, uh, what we're going to uh, do is assume that uh, the pole frequency is uh, caused by a sum of a bunch of time constants and we know that in uh, electronics uh, we've got our time constant here And uh, in uh, uh, electronics and electrical circuits, we know that time constants arise from products of resistances and capacitances. So each of these time constants is going to be a product of some capacitance I and some resistance I. Now in our case, uh, these uh, high frequency uh, uh, poles are going to be caused by uh, small capacitances. Uh, these capacitances are going to arise from the device. So if we look at what we've looked at so far uh, from our device physics uh, review, and we've seen uh, that these are the things like C mu and C pi for our bipolar transistors. And there are things like CGD, CGS, CDS, CDB, and CSB for our MOS devices. Okay, so these are going to be small capacitors. Uh, typical values are going to be uh, tens of uh, femtofarads to tens of picofarads. Now, uh, the resistances, uh, what RI is, is the total resistance seen by the capacitor. Okay, so we're going to identify uh, an individual capacitor and then we're going to look at the total resistance that that capacitor sees uh, in terms of the uh, uh, impedance connected to it. Uh, now these resistors are going to come from the device. So these are going to be our ROs and RPIs, for instance, uh, that we've looked at from our device physics review. Uh, but they're also going to be external resistances. So these could be used for biasing. Okay, in the next uh, set of slides, we're going to review the rules of how to find uh, the impedances, how to find the capacitances and resistances. Uh, and uh, we will identify how to calculate uh, the time constant. Uh, and then uh, in the following lecture, we'll do an example.